Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Last section, more or less, before uh, we're done with this tensor calculus stuff, at least for now. So um, we're going to talk about the covariant derivative today. Last time we talked about the Christoffel symbols. So the covariant derivative is a way to take a derivative of a tensor and get a tensor out. So if you recall, we did a, we did a few exercises like this. So recall, we'll just say recall that uh, partial T i partial x j does not produce a tensor. And we did a couple of calculations like that. We calculated partial t i partial x j. We had to use a chain rule and all kind of stuff. And we said, okay, well, what if it's a partial t i prime partial x j prime? Something like that. And then see how it transforms. Well, it's like a product rule going on whenever we look at the derivative of the transformation. So if you recall, uh, partial t i prime partial x j prime would have been something like partial partial x j prime of partial x R, let's see, no, partial x i prime, partial x r t r. And that would lead to a product rule, and that makes things go south. So that's not good. So this derivative, this partial derivative of tensor components is not a tensor. So it does not produce a tensor. So what do we do? What do we do instead? Well, think about taking the derivative of a, an invariant. So consider partial v vector partial xk. All right, that would be the derivative of an invariant with respect to xk. And we'll call that thing something like uh, r sub k. Well, rk prime then would be partial v partial xk prime which i could take through and i could say okay first differentiate partial v with respect to xr and then partial xr partial xk prime and that would be r sub r times partial xr partial xk prime so that would be a tensor transformation. So if you differentiate an invariant, something like a vector, like position vector or whatever, you differentiate a vector with respect to a coordinate, not its components, but the vector itself, then you get a tensor transformation. So what we're gonna do is uh, consider, so now, so now consider partial V partial xk. And now I'm going to expand that. So partial, partial xk. I'm going to expand that vector in terms of its contravariant components, vi, zi down. So this is the vector v represented with its contravariant components with respect to the covariant basis. So now by product rule, that would be partial vi, partial xk times zi down, plus vi up, partial zi down, partial xk by the product rule. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to relabel this derivative here using the Christoffel symbol. So this right here can be represent with Christoffel symbol.
So you can say that this is equal to partial v i partial x k z i down plus v i up. And now this derivative we said we could represent as partial j and then i k go down and then z j goes down. So this Christoffel symbol representation of this derivative of a basis vector z i with respect to coordinate x k. Now what we can do is relabel this dummy index right here. We'll call it j. So relabel to j instead. That way we can factor out zj basically. So that'll be partial vj, partial xk, zj plus vi up, gamma uh, j up, ik down, zj down. And now we will call this factored form partial vj up, partial xk plus vi up, gamma j up, ik down, and then zj factored out, just like that. And so we have the contravariant components, or we should, yeah, we should say we have the contravariant components of, actually it's a mixed tensor of order two, or a mixed tensor of rank two components with respect to the covariant basis. So now we actually have components of a rank two tensor. So these are components of a rank to tensor. And those components are what we're going to define as the covariant derivative of a contravariant tensor or contravariant vector. So definition the covariant derivative of some contravariant vector ti is defined to be del sub k of t j up, or actually I'll call it t i up, equals partial t i up, partial x k, plus v i, uh, v, we call it v j up, gamma, I and then JK down. So that is what we call the covariant derivative of the contravariant vector TI. Another notation we can use, so another notation is what some people call the semicolon notation. So it'd be something like ti up semicolon k. This is called the semicolon notation. And so now we have a form of differentiation that produces a tensor. 
So we have a form of differentiation now that produces a tensor. You can differentiate tensor components, Ti, such that you take the partial of Ti with respect to xk plus, oops, that should be a T there, plus the product Tj times the Christoffel symbol gamma i up jk down. And so now this is a rank two tensor. So this is a one, one tensor. We call it the covariant derivative because it introduces a covariant index. The k down is a covariant index. So this would be the so-called Christoffel symbol, or sorry, this would be the so-called covariant derivative of a contravariant vector. There are a bunch of notations for this thing. I'm just using the nabla sub k notation. It's probably the most common. So now in our discussion up here at the top, we were taking the derivative of a var invariant partial v partial xk and we took the derivative, but we expanded v in terms of its covariant basis. Well, we could do the same thing, but expand in terms of the contravariant basis and see what happens. So let's consider, so again, consider partial v partial xk, but now expand v in terms of its contravariant basis. So it's covariant components v i z i up, and use the product rule again to differentiate those. So that will be partial v i down z k, or sorry z x k, times z i up plus v i down partial z i up partial x k by the product rule, again. So that's the product rule. And now I have the partial derivative with respect to xk of the contravariant basis vector, and we know that we can represent that from last time with the Christoffel symbol. So partial vi down, partial xk, zi up minus vi, and then Christoffel, uh, we could say Christoffel i up, kj down, zj up. And again, we'll relabel the dummy index in the first one to be j, so we can factor it out. And so this will be partial vi down, partial xk, minus vi down, gamma i up, kj down, times zj up. And now, these are the components of a tensor, components of a tensor, with respect to the contravariant basis. So now, we define the covariant derivative of a covector. So definition, the covariant derivative of a covector we'll call it Tj down is nabla sub k of Tj down equals partial Tj down partial xk minus v, let's see, we'll call it v i down, gamma i up, kj down. And this is now a zero two tensor. Because it introduces another covariant index into the mix. So now we have a way to differentiate co contravariant vectors and covariant vectors such that the derivative itself is also a tensor.
And just a note, I'm not going to write this note down necessarily, but in a coordinate system where basis vectors don't change, i.e. Christoffel symbols are zero, um, the covariant derivative just amounts to taking the partial derivatives, right? The Christoffel symbols would be zero because those changes in basis vectors would be zero. So if you're using the covariant derivative in like Cartesian coordinates, you're really just taking the partial derivative. But maybe you have covariant derivative in polar coordinates, well then your basis vectors are changing. So you have to look at, okay, how do I account for the basis vectors changing and kind of eliminate that from my rate of change that I'm considering? So you take the rate of change of the components, but then you subtract away the rate of change of the basis vectors to eliminate the changing basis vectors from your rate of change. So that's the whole idea of the covariant derivative. You're basically eliminating the fact that the basis vectors underneath your coordinate system are possibly changing. So from there, it's pretty pretty easy to define the covariant derivative for any tensor. We'll just go to a rank two tensor um, and define, and then you can kind of see the pattern from there. So definition, the covariant derivative of rank two tensors. So we'll first do uh, Nabla sub k of something like t i j up is going to be partial t i j up partial x k plus t r j up gamma i up r k down. So basically what happens is the Christoffel symbol steals the upper index, the first upper index, and the, it also gets the partial derivative index k on the bottom. And then there's a dummy index for the summation. Plus t i p, so now it steals the second index, so we're going to have a p down, so let's stick the summation index, the first one down there, and then the k goes down there. And then also it's stealing the j in this case, so now we're stealing the j. <clears throat> so you can kind of see the pattern. It steals the first index in the first term. You know, i goes from t over here to i, and then the j goes from t over here to j. And then we have a summation index r here, and we have a summation index p here. So you have two correction terms basically, two corrections to make since you have a rank 2 tensor. So we make two Christoffel corrections for rank 2 tensors. So that's the covariant derivative of a contravariant rank 2 tensor is a 2 0 tensor. Okay, so basically if you have contravariant indices you add the corrections, if you have covariant indices you subtract the corrections. So you subtract the Christoffel symbols as it steals. So let's look at uh, let's look at a mixed tensor of rank 2, so Nabla sub k ti up j down it's going to be, these are definitions, and so it's going to be partial ti up j down, partial xk, and then the first one we say partial t, we'll call it r, j, gamma, well it steals the i, r, k goes down, minus t, i up, j gets stolen, we replace it with something like p, and then gamma, and then p goes up, and it steals the j, so we'll say uh, j, k down. So this is the, the first one here is the contravariant correction. Contravariant 
correction. And here's the covariant correction. Well, the minus sign is included. So here's the covariant correction. And then for a rank two covariant, so a zero two tensor, noblis of K of T i j down will be partial t i j down partial x k minus and so we have two covariant corrections so we'll say steals the i so we'll call it r j gamma and then um, put the r up here for the summation index and it steals the i and then k goes here minus t i p gamma p up it steals the J and the K goes down as well. And so that is our Christoffel corrections. Or those are our Christoffel corrections for the uh, zero two tensor. And now this thing is a zero three tensor. Zero three tensor. So the covariant derivative introduces a covariant index so you get a higher rank tensor than you started with so we in this case we started with rank two tensors we take the covariant derivatives we get rank three tensors we get three indices one of them is guaranteed to be covariant because this is uh, introducing a covariant index so questions Uh, let's see, I may have screwed, screwed it up. Let's see, the covariant derivative of covector. Uh, okay, so it, the tensor you're taking the derivative of, in this case, has a down index. So you get a, this is your covariant correction because it's already a covector. Covector correction. It has a covariant index. That's what we're talking about is the indices on the original tensor tell you whether or not to put a plus or minus sign. So here we have a covariant index tj down, and so we put a minus sign because of our derivation, basically. And that minus sign came from our discussion last time, basically. So whenever you have a covariant index, you're going to get a minus sign in your correction or your Christoffel term. All right, sweet. Well, let's take the covariant derivative of something. And what we will do is take the covariant derivative of the covariant basis. 
So example. Example. Find the covariant derivative of the covariant basis. Solution. So we're basically wanting to take nabla, whoops, don't put a vector symbol on it, sorry. <laughs> nabla sub k of zi down. So we want to compute the covariant derivative of the covariant basis. By definition, that's going to be partial zi down, partial xk. See, it's covariant, so we say minus, we'll call it z r down. And then we put it r up, and then the i steals over to the gamma, and then the k goes down. So that is our covariant derivative definition. And now we say, oh, wait. I'm taking derivative of a basis vector with respect to xk. So if I'm taking derivative of a basis vector with respect to xk right here, that actually is just a Christoffel correction, or it's just a Christoffel term, right? This is a this is a Christoffel term. We can call it something like gamma. Uh, we'll call it uh, gamma r i k z r minus gamma r i k zr, all from last time, and that is just the zero vector. Aha, the covariant derivative of the covariant basis is the zero vector. Well, that's great. The basis doesn't change with respect to the covariant derivative. So the takeaway is, note, the covariant basis is stationary with respect to the covariant derivative. Example, similarly, find covariant derivative of the contravariant basis. And I'll just leave that one open. And I'll let you work on it. I'll put it on the quiz. How about that? I'll just put this problem right here on the quiz. Um, I think we'll do it Friday, Friday afternoon. <sighs> so yeah, this problem right here will be one of the problems on the quiz. Find the covariant derivative of the contravariant basis. I wonder, I wonder what happens. Uh, let's see, theorem. Theorem. So the theorem says the product rule holds, the product rule holds for nabla sub k. So the covariant derivative obeys the product rule, which is crazy, right? Like, this thing's super complicated. How could it possibly obey something like the product rule or whatever? You know, we got all these differentiation rules. Well, let's show that for, at least for a specific type of tensor, um, it does indeed obey the product rule. So, um, let's see, for example, if you were to take nabla sub k of like a covector ti sj, 
then that should in theory be nabla sub k of ti times sj up plus ti down nabla sub k of sj up. So basically the product of the first times the second plus the first times product or the derivative of the second, sorry. Derivative of the first times the second plus first times derivative of the second. In this case, derivative is just covariant derivative. So I'll show you the proof for this very special case here. A more general proof, of course, you have to, arbitrary number of indices up and down. Um, you have to be a little more creative in how you represent that, but here we go. We'll show you this very special case. You have a covector and a um, contravariant vector multiplying in an outer product fashion. And so we're going to take the co covariant derivative of this outer product, basically. So this is basically covariant derivative of outer product. I wonder what happens for an inner product. Interesting. Hmm. Anyway, um, let's look at this proof. So, nabla sub k of ti down sj up. By definition, that would be partial partial xk of ti down sj up plus um, we'll do the contravariant correction first, so ti down, sp, so there's still the j over, and then pk down on gamma, minus tr, sj, put the r up on the gamma, and then the ik down. And now what we can do is a normal product rule for partial derivatives. So this is a partial derivative product rule right here in red. So this is going to be partial ti down, partial xk, sj up, plus ti down, partial sj up, partial xk, plus ti down, sp up, gamma, j, p, k, minus tr down, sj up, gamma, R I K. And now what we can do is kind of rearrange these. We'll group these two together and then group these two together to get partial T I, partial X K minus T R gamma. R I K and basically factor out S J plus T I down times partial S J partial X K plus S P up gamma J up P K down, which is indeed nabla sub K of T I down times sj up plus ti down times nabla sub k of sj up. So that's not the whole proof, that's really just the special case, So, but that's, uh, that's more or less the idea. Questions?
Okay, let's look at uh, one more example. Let's see, maybe one more. Yeah. Okay, let's look at uh, let's look at example here. Example. Calculate covariant derivative of the metric tensor G I J. Solution. It's a covariant derivative of the metric tensor. Well, that's going to be, let's see. Nablus of k of g i j. Well, that's going to be Nablus of k of z i down dotted with z j down, right? That's the the metric tensor definition. Basically, it's the covariant basis uh, dot product of the covariant basis vectors z i z j to get the components g i j. So that's Nablus of k of this uh, dot product. Well. What do we know? We know that the product rule holds. So this is basically like an outer product of two, two um, components, z i and z j. It's like an outer product of these two. So we could say this is a product rule. So I can say covariant derivative of z i dotted with z j plus z i dotted with covariant derivative of z j. Well, what did we already say? We already said that the covariant derivative of the covariant basis is zero. So this can be zero vector dotted with zj down plus zi down dotted with a zero vector again. And it's just going to be zero plus zero, which is zero. So the covariant derivative of the metric tensor, aha, uh -huh, is zero. Very interesting, very interesting. Any other questions so far?
<laughs> All right, I think I'll stop there, actually, for our discussion of the covariant derivative. Now, for the quiz, for the exam, what, what might I ask you to do? Well, I already told you one of the quiz problems. Um, another problem is I might just ask you to write out what's the covariant derivative of this arbitrary tensor. It has, you know, one index up and two indices down. Well, then you'd have one positive Christoffel correction and two negative Christoffel corrections, or maybe, you know, whatever. Or I might ask you to find the covariant derivative of this, of the metric, you know, um, just kind of like replicate some of the stuff we did today. So. I'm not really going to go into a lot of examples uh, in depth here in this section. I'll post the worksheet, um, give you an idea of what to look out for, but we'll go over the worksheet on Wednesday, quiz on Friday, exam on Monday. So that's kind of the, the schedule, the outline. The, uh, the papers are going to be due next week. Uh, again, if you're a senior, they're going to be due on Monday. If you're not a senior, they're due on Wednesday. There's the train in the background. I'll let you guys listen to that for a second. Old Faithful. So anyway. Questions? Uh, I guess I could go ahead and, you know, open it up. So, yeah, I'll probably, probably do that sometime this week, either today or tomorrow, maybe, maybe tomorrow. So, yeah, I guess if you got it done, you can go ahead and submit it for sure, definitely. Other questions? All right, sweet. Um, yeah, good call, good call. I think I'll, uh, I think we'll call it a day. I'll post the worksheet on Moodle for chapter six, you can check it out. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, um, it's on Moodle um, under the announcements. So yeah, um, Moodle, go to the uh, like the first page on the left, so like the introduction page. And then there's an announcements tab and you can access the requirements for that. So yeah, or yeah, hopefully you got an email, but I've been having some students say that they don't get the emails through Moodle for some reason. But anyway, if not, we can just share it through, uh, through Discord or whatever, but yeah. What? Uh, that's not good because that's where I've like posted so many things. Let's do a screen share um, in a second when we get off here. So we'll call it a day. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. I'll post the worksheet so you can go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to look at Rachel's uh, screen, try to figure out what the heck's going on. So anyway, I'll see you guys later.